You don't have to bring your two pound laptop for a weekend trip or even a day trip if you don't want to. At least I don't. Instead, I take my iPad Air to organize and edit my photos on the go. Here's my iPad Air photography workflow for traveling. We're gonna go over this from the beginning to the end, but first, as a disclaimer, I'm a hobbyist photographer and content creator, and this is the workflow that has worked for me. Hopefully you can take something from this and it'll help you optimize your workflow at all when it comes to traveling. You see, I have an iPad Air 4 for its USB-C port, big screen, and weight. We also have the Apple Pencil 2 for precise control and ease of use with the iPad. Then we have the SanDisk 2TB SSD for backup and the HyperDrive USB dock, which has an SD card slot as well as a micro SD card slot. The cameras that I often take for travel are the Sony a6400 and my now Sony ZV E1. Lenses vary, but all of this fits into my 10 liter Moment sling bag alongside more camera accessories. After shooting for the day, I organize my photos and videos in the iPad's file app. As soon as I insert my SD card, it shows up right away on the left hand side and thus begins my organization within the SD card. Sometimes I select all the photos and separate between the raw and JPEG folders that I create, then group these two into a folder. I prefer to title this folder with the year, month, date, camera name, and mention the location and sometimes people I'm with. Now here's one of the most important steps, making copies. I make a copy from the SD card, the original place of course, then paste it into secondary locations like my iPad in a projects folder, as well as an external hard drive, or in this case the SSD, which is the SanDisk 2 terabyte. This way I'll have three copies, one on the SD card, one on the SSD, and one on the iPad in case of unforeseeable events that would destroy any one of these backups. Remember, I'm not deleting anything off my SD card until I am sure I have a backup of my photos in my main hard drive and in my cloud. I use Backblaze for my unlimited cloud storage. When it comes to transferring, I find it takes several five to 15 minutes, depending on the number of photos I take. I average around hundred shots, at least on a slower day. During the file transfer, I'm already settling in for the night after a day of travel activities, so I hardly notice the transfer times. When that's all done, I open up Adobe Lightroom, which allows me to edit raw photos as a subscriber. Otherwise, you can only edit JPEGs for the free version. Then I'll create an album for each day of the shoot or sometimes an album for the entire weekend. And then I'll add images from the files app. Once they're all imported, then begins the culling process in the develop mode. Similar to Tinder, I swipe away the ones I don't like, or at least flag my rejected photos. I don't worry too much about reading my photos or flagging photos I like, because in the end, I filter my photos in the library view, select them all and delete them. Sometimes I'll culture my photos one more time, but if I have less than hundred photos, then I just begin editing. When I'm done, I don't use any particular settings except for these and just export to the files app. Then just save it in another folder called edits. Once that's done, I airdrop the photos to myself, my wife, and any friends on the trip, then back it up to the SSD. By the way, you can just disconnect the SSD when you're done transferring. The one feature that I don't like to rely on when editing on my iPad is the cloud syncing. I find it inconvenient for a fresh group of photos to have to have a cloud import, especially when your internet speeds are less than ideal and your imports take forever. If you do end up syncing libraries. If you're going offline and you have space, save files on your device. For me, the iPad Air is the best mobile photo editing machine when I'm on the go, giving me less weight to carry, less space to occupy, and another way to keep creating away from home. Though if I had to edit videos with Final Cut Pro, I really have to get an iPad Pro, but that'll never happen, I think. Listen, if iPads are not your cup of tea, check out this video over here where I share about my experience with the Samsung Tab 8 and editing photos on it.